Um, yeah, I'm a bit dishevelled here. I've got uh, stuff everywhere at the minute. Always, I get all tidied up, cleaned up. Everything looks fantastic, and then it's just like a freaking wasteland for weeks. But uh, I uh, declare, as of today, <laughs> my hull is now complete. And uh, I've said it a few times, but then I find another little bit. G'day guys, so today is a uh, finishing day for the gunnel. So you can see along the gunnel line here, um, I've been putting an extra layer of 300, another layer of 1200, another layer of 300, another layer of 600, and another layer of 300, and then peel flying the edges along this, uh, this line here, all the way around the boat. The reason why I'm doing that is I wanna make sure that I've got a really thick flange so that when I cap it with the deck, I can glue it and bolt it. Uh, to get a good seal so then I can do an internal glass on it as well. So uh, I'm going to do a bit of cleaning up here. I'm going to do this section up at the front here and right down the side here. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to remove the purlins and then I'm going to repair underneath the purlins, which at the moment is just like still the mould because I couldn't physically glass up over the top. What I need to do there is I need to grind away at the edge, clamp the mould to the product or to the hull and then continue to uh, to glass up over the top and just finish it. I've already done it just there, did that yesterday and uh, it took me about 20 minutes to do that little section. It's only this wide, that little section where I've, that pearl has been sitting for the last 12 months. But uh, yeah, almost done. You so it's off to the cutting room before a big, uh, big day laminating the gunnels. You'll notice here that uh, all of my substrates I keep in the uh, security and the cleanliness of my factory where there's very little dust in there. You don't want any dust or any uh, impurities entering into the substrates because it could affect the catalyzing of the resin. Obviously you don't want that laminated into your boat either. Uh, and it is a requirement of my AMSA um, survey that I do keep my materials uh, in a dry, uh, almost temperature con controlled environment. So here we are at my gel coat machine, I've just attached the air source, I've turned the air on. I then take, turn my attention to the uh, machine pressure, which I then just turn up to a small uh, pressure that then enables the pump to recycle the resin up through that silver hose into the pump and then back down into the blue hose, which ensures that I don't get any air bubbles and I reflux that for a few minutes. Then turn the catalyst pump on which you'll notice there the pressure gauge uh, increasing there, ensuring once again that there's no air bubbles in that catalyst. And then I switch from the reflux function into the, uh, the line that feeds the gun. So by switching that, I've then diverted all the resin and, uh, and catalyst down to the, the Graco gun. And then I can increase the machine pressure up to uh, approximately four bar. And similarly, the gun pressure then gets increased uh, to allow for the air assist function and to keep constant pressure running down to the gun which then ensures that the atomization occurs with the catalyst so we don't end up with catalyst uh, not mixing in the uh, resin stream. So I'm working here on the gunnels of the of the hull. Um, this is the final um, layers that I'm laying here basically consisted of a 300 CSM, a 1200 quadraxial, a 300 CSM and a 600 double bias and then a final 300 CSM and peel ply. Uh, it was a good few days work to really get this done uh, correctly and uh, once the peel ply was applied it was, uh, it was a perfect finish. There was a number of areas there that, uh, that needed quite a bit of attention. Uh, as it was sort of high up in the air it wasn't uh, easy to access from down inside the hull so I had to um, you'll notice here where I was standing on the on the chine and uh, and on various platforms that I'd uh, fashioned up to, to make it a bit easy for me. But it was not an easy task because you're working up in the air the whole time, um, basically applying that resin consistently all the way around to make sure that that flange is, is consolidated correctly, which will give me a strong join and uh, and very very strong uh, section around that edge there. Now 
Now, right about now, you could probably give me a bit of a hard time for not um, speeding this up to a thousand times the speed that I normally uh, show you guys all this stuff, but I just wanted to show you the sort of um, you know, meticulous and slow pace that, uh, that I work at. Uh, I tend to do it at this speed to make sure that I get a really fine finish. There's, there's nothing worse than going fast at something and uh, getting to the end and having to do re repairs and, uh, and restorative work to, to get it back to how it was supposed to be done in the first place. And perhaps the most testing of uh, sections on this was up in the bow there, I couldn't actually get a platform or anything to fit in there because that chine that you can see there is, is quite uh, radius. It doesn't really have anything to bite a, a platform in as to the ones on the right there. So it was basically sitting, kneeling, squatting, doing whatever you could do and remembering you're six foot up in the air um, with a pair of work boots on, gripping on on the, uh, the substrate that you're standing on. So it was not that easy and now it's done. I'm very, very pleased. <laughs> Right, so I'm seeing a lot of uh, channels out there where they're wiping acetone on uh, fiberglass when they're really fiberglassing. Then, I mean, that's probably a good way to clean, but it's certainly not good for the fiberglass. Fiber acetone will, in fact, melt or dissolve any resin structure or any matrix that you have there. So I strongly recommend um, styrene monomer. Very important that that's used, not acetone. It's actually against Australian standards with marine safety to use acetone. Um, very, very uh, dangerous way to go because what you're doing is breaking down the matrix of the resin, uh, which is bonding the whole structure together. So use styrene, only way to go. So it appears I've been uh, cheating you guys of, of that section that I just did along that four beam there, uh, which is 1,300, 1,200, 300, 600, 300, and peel ply uh, is around eight hours of work. So by time lapsing, and I'm not showing you exactly uh, the the time frame that it takes, and, and one thing to uh, to laminate this entire hole, as you see it here, has been um, I've estimated around about five months of solid work, probably eight nine hours a day. So don't ever underestimate your time when you're building something like this. We're, we're talking lamination, layers, and, and meticulous work, grinding, sanding, fixing voids if you have any. Um, yes, I could have sped it up with an infusion process, but uh, then there's the risk that I would have fucked it up, basically. And uh, I hate saying that, but you know, that's what happens. But uh, I uh, declare, as of today, my hull is now complete. And uh, I've said it a few times, but then I find it up a little bit. I've been working meticulously to get it done. The only final things I need to do is uh, fix where these purlins sit there, there and on the, uh, on the port side over here, and uh, that's it. It's ready to demold as uh, soon as I put the bulk heads in. So I have unsuccessfully tried to weld these bloody eye beams in place about 300 times, and I'm over the rain. It's one thing about us, I just, we hate the rain because we're not used to it, but uh, you know, we get a lot of it, but we're just not used to working it, it kills us. Okay, so it's come time to weld these props in place. I've got to make sure these are dead level. So firstly, 
We're getting our spirit level on the truck. I put it on this big slab because I knew it was dead level. And uh, you can see there, mate, this, this truck is absolutely dead level. So from there, we then have to square up these props with a second uh, spirit level. And that is looking pretty damn good. That's pretty much exactly where it needs to be. So by being able to trap that spirit level in there with the aqua prop, I can know that it's exactly perpendicular to the uh, to the chassis and can weld it in place. Right, so each of these acros have got to be uh, cleaned up. I've got to clean basically where it's going to fit, so have a bit of a grind here, uh, where I'm going to weld that on. And then from uh, this point to this point needs to be cleaned, because there's going to be seam weld welded down this very narrow point here. We've got to be careful, there's not too much heat goes into it, so that the acro will still operate up and down inside the, um, inside the tube here. Uh, that's one thing I'm not very good at, so I'm gonna have to turn my voltage down a little bit, but still make sure I get good penetration. Had to go into town this morning and buy two new grinders because I killed two yesterday. Uh, this truck's taken its toll. They were thermally 30 years old, so I think I got good use out of them. But uh, a couple of new Makitas, had to do it. Right, so never assume something's perfect. You see here, I had to uh, drive a little screwdriver in and I'm gonna try and get some weld in here and uh, and get and build it up a little bit to try to hold it in place. But we've got a dead square here now. Um, I assumed that the chassis was dead square and clearly it's not. Um, obviously a little bit of a discrepancy, but this has to be dead vertical uh, without question. So I've driven a spanner, uh, sorry, a, uh, a screwdriver into there and I'll weld around it and then remove the screwdriver, hopefully. I like your work, son. Yeah, well, just, shit, that's water. Is that water there? No. Nah. Get that miter right in the bottom. No, nah. that's it. How can I watch my eyes? They're in my head. <laughs> Who said I needed to get a professional in? <laughs> no one needs a professional. If you want a job done properly, you do it yourself. Yeah, probably should have. Then you wouldn't have any fun. Oh, that's right. What would I do? Dreams are made, not bought. Here that's at right. Life on the mold, John. Exactly right, mate. Dreams are made. You got to make bought. everything. <laughs> if you're not making stuff each day, you might as well not be here. So what did you make today? Um. <laughs> um, um, I'm trying to make a tabletop, but all the timber's wet. <laughs> no good. I've got a t-shirt coming. What did you make today? From Doug at SV Seeker. I bought oh it. yeah? I bought it. Oh cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm going to buy you one. Don't buy me anything, son. No, I'm buying you one. Yeah, it's not a good look, really. Well, it's not going to see when you've got a coat of paint on it. I <laughs> think I'm going to paint it. Oh yeah, it'll rust. Oh. All your welds will rust before the steel will. Oh, I got the boys. Check them out. They're coming to check out big boy stuff. Check out big boys, guys. So, this is my Jack. What do you reckon? Yeah, we're calling Jack. Is that good? Oh, 
Right, you ready, Josh? Yeah, I got it now. Here we go. There's going to be four of these. There'll be one here, one there, and two more. All going together here. And we're going to lift up to this boat. How cool is that? That is cool, isn't it? That's pretty cool, isn't it? You're going to rock the big boat over there? Yeah, we're going to lift it up to this. What do you reckon, Josh? Yeah. Good. Pretty good, eh? Yeah. Perfect. Eight ton rounds and it works. I'm stoked, I'm so stoked. I thought the way it's just so supportive. Look at that, it's pretty strong. There we go. So it was suggested by uh, Greggy that I got the truck off that I put some studs in here uh, rather than drill through this just so I don't weaken it. Hopefully they're going to stay upright. I'm going to weld these little studs on uh, on here vertical and then they'll go through when the thing's upside down through here and, uh, and allow a bit of room so that it lifts the acroprop up. So that'll be welded to the top of the... Uh, the top of this, which is this this beam here, go through here, a couple of washers, and maybe a nylon washer in here just to allow a bit of slippage of the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do the job. So I'm going to get in and do that now. And it's uh, it's like probably about freaking five degrees and blowing about 45 knots at the moment. It is awful. That stud up in here, they're welded on. Whole thing can move, but the great thing is that it's located, but it gives a little bit of movement and can float as it lifts up and a little bit of adjustment so that the acroprops being dead straight are not so critical, even though they are. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of discrepancy as it gets under load. So, yeah, pretty clever idea by Big Greggy, and uh, now it's done. Well, that's it for another session, dudes. Um, yeah, I'm a bit dishevelled here. I've got uh, stuff everywhere at the minute. Always, I get all tidied up, cleaned up. Everything looks fantastic, and then it's just like a freaking wasteland for weeks. Um, at the moment, I'm at the point where I've got all of my gunnels all um, done and peel applied. You can see the the floor here behind me is all uh, peel applied, and uh, and essentially the entire hull is complete. Uh, it's been a bit of a process and uh, and I've had a couple of issues with my gun which has uh, had to wait for some parts so nothing goes smoothly on the mould and uh, that seems to be the way it goes <laughs> but uh, you know if you'd like this episode give me a like please give me a like make a comment you know I, I was at the boat show a couple of days ago and uh, and caught up with uh, Marcus Cunningham and his dad Roscoe and uh, I met an old John and Greg from WA had a few guys uh, come up to me at the boat show who'd uh, uh, is seeing my channel so I think that's absolutely hilarious but it was great to have a beer with uh, Marcus and uh, and Roscoe at uh, down at the Tokyo Hotel at Darling Harbour after we uh, alighted from the marina proceedings and uh, yeah we had a great time we had a great catch up and g'day Roscoe g'day Marcus good to see you and uh, to Noel and Greg that I met at the boat show well mate you guys are champions and uh, Greg's building a Fusion 40 over in WA and Noel's a fiberglass from the Central Coast so great to catch up with these guys that's what I love about this is I'm actually meeting people I would never ever come across and uh, and having a good chat so please uh, hang out for the next episode and I'll see you next time on uh, life on this mould <laughs> check it out it's like a bombs in it freaking hell